All right, welcome back. So we now have added our usernames and I went in and added a username for uh, those two users that I had that didn't have a username. Uh, if you're interested in doing something like that, you can go into your Rails console. Um, so we can go Rails console and do, um, I'm gonna do at user one equals user dot find. Let's do first, so that'll bring up the first user. And this assigns the user to this variable just like we do in normal Ruby. But then we can change this. So we can say at user one dot username equals Java the hut. And that updates that. If you were to output user one, you'll see that it's been changed, but you actually need to save it. So if we do dot save, you'll see an update hits the database. And now if we refresh this page, this will be shown there. So it's a nice little thing. If you're using lots of test data, this is not going to work very well. Uh, you'll probably be um, deleting and recreating data using um, the various active record things like seed the database um, so that you have a good set of test data. Um, but if you're working on a really small app, and in our case we have three users and a few pins, uh, the Rails console is nice for just updating some things instead of blowing them all away. So right now we have uh, our pins, we have usernames attached to our users now. So what we want to do is make it so we can link to this username uh, and be able to take us to an account, something like this, localhost 3000, whatever our domain will be for that slash username. And that username will then take us to a page that we can then uh, display the user's name, maybe eventually an avatar and all of their specific pins, the pins that they have added themselves. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is create a controller for our users. So we talked about this in our last project video um, where we, if we go into controllers, we have a home controller, uh, which is optional. That's what's currently serving up our home page. We might also use it to serve up an about or a contact page. And then we have a pins controller, and that right now is where most of our work lives. Um, but what we want is a user's controller, and we're gonna then be able to use that to display a user. So let's do Rails generate uh, let's see, controller users. So we'll go ahead and just hit enter on that and we get a blank controller. So we know that we wanna do a show. So we'll go ahead and do def show. And we're also going to need a layout for it. So if we go into users, we're gonna create a show.html.erb and we know that that's what that's going to be called because we just defined def show here. Now, this doesn't just automatically run for us, though. We want to make it so that uh, we can create a route that will point our users to users show and then render this HTML page. Uh, and on this page, we need to somehow be able to um, display the username. Let's go ahead and put this in like an H3. And then there might be some kind of biography that will happen here. I'm just gonna put some placeholder text there. And then eventually we want to probably display all of our pins here. So we'll display the username. Uh, eventually we're gonna have a biography and then we'll display all of our pins. So let's see what we've got here. So we know that we need to create a route. So Right now, if we go into config, we go into routes. Right now, our uh, routes are pretty simple. We have a resource and we have device. Um, device is handling our users. Resources is handling our pins. So we have our create, update, all the different endpoints that you would need there. But let's go ahead and just create a generic uh, get endpoint for this. So I'm gonna do, um, it's just gonna be username. And so this is effectively going to be the same as, again, localhost colon 3000 slash username. This username will be a variable. And we don't need the slash here, so we'll go ahead and get rid of all of that. And we want this to take the user to a specific um, controller. So you can see down here in this example, 
get product slash ID, we'll take them to the catalog controller and the view method. We wanna take uh, our users to the users controller with the show method. And we can get a little fancier by putting this at the end where we just do as user. Now as user is then going to give us access to user path. So if we run our rake routes, we can come in here and see that user is now slash username, which takes us to users slash show. And again, as we use this in our URLs, we'll be able to do user underscore path, just like we have pins underscore path, root underscore path, and so forth. So that looks good. So if we just come in here and hit enter now, we should get a page. Uh, if we had not done that, we would have gotten an error. But now we can see that we want to put Java the Hut here. Lorem Ipsum is going to eventually become our bio and then all of our pins. So um, how might we get our username and get a user? So in this case, we could just grab this ID that we have access to, um, but we want to go get our whole user. So right now when we're inside of show, we have access to params. We always have access to params, um, but we don't always necessarily have something inside of it. So if we were to dump these out, we would get uh, a bunch of different things that Rails gives us, but we also get back that username that we defined inside of our route. So this parameter now is available to us. So uh, we have this available to us, so we can go ahead and find our user using a username. So um, currently our models are not unique, so let's go ahead and do that. Otherwise, there will be an issue a little bit later. So under user, we have device and we have has many pins. But what we want to do is validate the uniqueness of username. And what this will do is prevent any other username from being saved that is the exact same thing. Because if we had two Java the Huts, we won't know which user to show. Uh, and that's very important. So if we just save that, right now I have three accounts already created and they're all unique so I don't need to delete them. But again, these are important things to think about uh, if you add them when you already have data in your system. So let's go ahead and clean that up, save that. And we're gonna do a find. So I'm gonna do at um, user equals, and we're gonna do user.find. And let's go ahead and open our active record docs. So here I am in Rails Guides Active Record Query Interface. Um, we can see a lot about how Active Record works. So here's dot find, um, but somewhere in here there is something that is a little bit easier to use for this situation, um, which is find by. So here we can see client dot find by, and then first name colon, and then the name that we want to search by. So we want to do the same thing. Uh, we want to do find by username and that username is going to be coming in from our params username so that's that parameter that was in our uh, URL we could also do a where so here's user dot where and then you pass in uh, username colon and then the user as well so that would work as well um, but let's go ahead and get rid of our extra spacing here this now gives us access to at user inside of our users show view. So let's go open our views again under users show. We can now change this here to be equal to at user dot username. We save that and go ahead and open our app. Now you have job of the hut, job of the hut. Eventually this will be equal to our bio and then now we can display our pins so the next video we'll go ahead and add a bio um, pretty straightforward very similar to what we've done with um, adding a username but what we can also do right here is go ahead and turn this into uh, our view for our pins so what I want to do here is go ahead and look at our pins view and let's see for right now 
we're going to use the exact same code. So let's go ahead and grab this whole thing here. And we're going to paste that in. We will change this later to be a partial so that we don't have the exact same code in two places. Um, but for right now, let's go ahead and try this out. Um, so we have at user, and here we have at pins. And we only want to show this person's pins. We don't want to show everyone's pins. Right now, at pins actually won't work because if we go into our controller, we don't have something in here that says at pins. We could do something like this, but that would only get us all the pins where um, this would give us everything. And we could also do some kind of find by or where statement to filter those things out. But one of the magics of Rails here is that we know that our user, if we go pull up our model, has many pins. And what this allows us to do is we can say at user dot pins, and this will go ahead and query all the pins that are owned by that user. So let's go ahead and do that here. So we'll do at user dot pins dot each. And now at this point, this code here is all going to be the same as what we've done before because now within this loop we have a pin. And that pin we can check to see if it's the current user. That will always be true because we're inside of our user's pins here. Um, however, if I go and view someone else's profile, that will be false. And so we won't be able to edit those things. So let's go ahead and see if this works just off the bat. And it looks pretty good. So right here, Job of the Hut has all these pins. Um, if we go to, I believe, what we have as our other username, we have this is just a test. So if we go to this is just a test, we get just one pin. That looks pretty good. And then let's do one final thing in this video where we're going to link this link to that profile so that we don't have to manually type in this is just a test. So that's pretty easy to do. So we can go ahead and do that here in our show and then we can go add it to our index. This is where uh, making this into a partial will become important because anytime we make a change to the grid, we want it to take effect everywhere that we're using the grid. So here's our, let's see, the username that we're being put out is right here. And what we can do is use link underscore two. And the way that this works is that the first argument is the text. So just like we've done before, we've done things like um, link to edit and then some kind of edit pin path would go here. Um, but what we want to do is do link to and then this is going to output the username and then we want to take them to the user path. So we'll do user path. And we need to pass in pin.username, pin.user.username. And that's because this is the variable that's in that pin path. So again, if we run rake routes, there's that variable. We have to pass in the username because that username will then get used to then do that query that we have. So that should be pretty good there if we refresh our page. Um, so again, this is the pins index. So let's go look at job of the hut here. And now this is a link, takes you to Job of the Hut. So let's come back into our view. Let's grab this whole line. And again, we're going to open our views again. We're currently in users show, and it's the same grid that we're using in pins index. So let's go ahead and update the username to be a link there. If we go back to pins, now Job of the Hut is a link. Now this is just a test as a link, and we can go back and forth between those two things. Uh, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and review our list of features that we want to do. Um, we did add a user profile page. We have shown users pins on their profile page. And so let's go ahead and move that up here a little bit. Um, let's link to the pin image to take you to pins show. Um, so we can actually do that right now as well and then we'll leave these other four items for the next video. So we've just linked this to the profile, but we also want to link this image to the actual pin. So 
We can do that by going into our index. So here we are in pin index. And right here we just have an image tag. Um, but we can do the same thing that we did before where we have link to um, then some text and then the actual link that we want to take them to. And we can do some Rails magic here where if we just give it pin, then it will take us to the pin. So if we save that and refresh this, it won't look nice. But now we get this text here and we can click on it and it'll take you to that specific pin. Now this page needs to be cleaned up um, and we can take a look and some inspiration from something else to see how we might make this look nicer. Um, but if we go back, click on this one, we'll get taken to a different pin. So pretty cool. Um, but now we want to make the picture the link instead of this text. So if we look at what we have here, we want to replace some text with this whole image. And so what we can do there is let's go ahead and get rid of our image responsive class. We're not going to need that. And we're going to grab this whole image tag here and save that. Image tag, let's wrap this in parentheses. There we go. Um, so you will have to keep track of parentheses because they're optional in Rails. So if we wanted to include all of them, um, they are available there. The Ruby way is to omit them. Um, so it would look something like this. Um, but what we need to do is include them here just for clarity's sake so that Rails doesn't get confused. So we're going to do that. Now we can click on this one, takes you to an image, click on that one, takes you to an image. So that works pretty well, and that's a pretty good place to stop this video. We'll see you in the next one.